brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. I hope this how-to video helps you out. And next time you need parts for your vehicle, think of 1AAuto.com. Thanks. In this video, we're gonna show you how to remove and reinstall the spindle in this 2008 Dodge Ram. You'll need 18 to 35 millimeter sockets with a ratchet and extensions, breaker bar, hooked pick, bungee cord or mechanics wire, a pry bar, hammer, flat blade screwdriver, needle nose pliers, a torque wrench, and jack and jack stands. With the vehicle on the ground, using a 22 millimeter socket and a breaker bar, break the lug nuts for your wheel loose. These chrome lug nuts tend to be swollen, so make sure your socket's on there good. Using a small pick, remove the center cap and the wheel. Using a 35 millimeter socket and a breaker bar, crack the axle nut loose. Raise and support your vehicle and finish removing the lug nuts. Remove the wheel and tire from the hub. Remove the two. 21 millimeter bolts securing the caliper bracket to the spindle. Be sure to crack both of these loose before removing them. If they're removed fully one at a time, the caliper can twist, cause the flex hose on the brake line to tear. Be sure to support the assembly while you remove the last bolt. Remove the entire caliper and carrier assembly. Using a bungee cord, secure it out of the way by hanging it off of the frame. Remove the rotor from the hub. Brace the hub with a pry bar and finish removing your axle nut. Using a hammer, tap the end of the axle to push it out of the hub. Remove the nut for the tie rod. She uses a 21 millimeter socket and ratchet. You want to leave the nut on a few threads so it's flush with the bottom of the stud. Carefully tap up with a hammer. Remove the nut. Remove the tie rod from the control arm. Remove the 22 millimeter nut connecting the upper ball joint to the spindle. Tap the front of the knuckle right where the ball joint comes through with a hammer to release it. Careful not to hit it too hard because this is aluminum and it could crack. Once it's loosened up, you may have to hit the bottom of the control arm to release the joint from the knuckle. Using a flat blade screwdriver, release the tab on the connector for the ABS sensor. Push down and release the connector. Release it from the clamps under the control arm. Pull down on the spindle or push up on the upper control arm to separate them and remove the axle shaft from the wheel bearing. A pair of needle nose pliers, straighten out the legs on the cotter pin. You want to get them as tight as you can and as free of kinks as is possible. This may mean pinching them together and working them back and forth a little. Keep them together. Stick one of the legs from your pliers through the eyelet of the cotter pen. 
clamp down and twist it out. Regardless of whether or not the cotter pin comes out in one piece, you will want to replace these after they've been removed. Using a 22 millimeter socket and breaker bar, remove the nut on the lower ball joint. Ensure that your axle nut is partially installed so the hub, once released from the ball joint, does not fall. Put some weight onto the top of the spindle, either by pulling down with your hand or a pry bar, and hit the bottom of the spindle here with a hammer to release the ball joint from the spindle. Once the ball joint is separated from the spindle, remove your axle nut the rest of the way, release the axle from the hub and the spindle from the ball joint. Install the ball joint as well as the CV axle into the spindle, making sure that both line up properly. Start the washer and castle nut onto the threads of the ball joint. Line up and install the splines of your axle into the hub. Start your axle nut on as far as it'll go. Lift up on the upper control arm. Slide the upper ball joint into the spindle. Pull down until you're able to get the nut started onto the threads. And tighten it down with a 22 millimeter socket and ratchet. Torque the upper ball joint to 40 foot pounds and add an additional 90 degrees. Tighten and torque the lower ball joint with a 22 millimeter socket to 38 foot pounds and add 90 degrees. Install the cotter pin vertically into the castle nut with the longer leg facing down. Bend the longer of the two legs over and you can either leave the shorter leg straight intact or simply cut it off to make it easier to remove later. Reinstall the tie rod into the spindle. Start the nut, tighten it with a 21 millimeter socket and ratchet. Torque the tie rod to 45 foot pounds. Reinstall the harness into the keepers on the bottom of the control arm. Reinstall the connector. Push down on the safety tab. Reinstall the rotor onto the hub. Make sure that you don't twist the line on your brake hose. Reinstall the caliper carrier assembly onto the rotor and start the bolts on the back side. Tighten the bolts down with a 21 millimeter socket and ratchet. Torque the caliper bolts to 130 foot pounds. Reinstall your wheel and tire onto the vehicle. Start the lug nuts with the 22 millimeter socket. Get all the lug nuts as tight as you can in the air and lower the vehicle. After tightening your axle nut, torque it to 185 foot pounds. Pop the center cap back into place. Torque your lug nuts to 135 foot-pounds in a cross pattern. Thanks for tuning in. We hope this video helped you out. Next time you need parts for your car, 
please visit 1aauto.com. Also check out our other helpful how-to as well as diagnosis videos.